Hello, I'm Greg Pollock, and you're watching Rails for Zombies. Down your brains and your entrails. It's time to stop and learn some Rails. Because we got something new to grab. Rails for Zombies by Andy Lab. In order for this video to make sense, you're going to need to know a little bit about the Ruby language. If you don't know anything yet, pause this video, go to tryruby.org, go through that tutorial, and then come back and start the video. So in this first episode, we're going to be deep in the CRUD. We're going to be talking about CRUD. Now, bear with me if you're an expert in you know, some of these languages and some of these concepts. Um, we'll get to the advanced stuff soon enough, but we need to make sure everyone's on the same page. So we're going to be creating Twitter for Zombies. That's our application. If you don't know why, go back to the front page and watch the intro. But let's jump into it for now. So here we have our first database table. It kind of looks like a spreadsheet. We're calling it Tweets. It has four rows, and it has three columns. Now we might put a label on each of these columns. The first one is the ID, the second one is status, and the third one represents the zombie, like Ash, Bob, Jim. These are our zombies. Now our first zombie challenge is going to be to retrieve a hash of the tweet with ID equals three. Now I'm not going to show you the solution. What I'm going to show you first is the result, what we want to get back from the database. In this case, we want to get back a hash which looks like this. Now you should be familiar with what a hash is, but here's a small recap. So if we do puts b status, we're going to get back I just ate some delicious brains. If we do puts b zombie, we're going to get back Jim. And if we do this at the bottom, we're going to get back, Jim said, I ate some delicious brains, because you know, zombies love eating the brains. Now let's get back to our database table and our challenge. So there's our challenge again. Now I'm going to show you the actual solution, the code that we want to write. We want to write t equals tweet.find3. So what that's going to do is get us back that hash, and we can then do puts.tid gets us three, puts t status gets I just ate some delicious brains, and puts t zombie gets us back Jim. Now there's another way we can write this in Rails. Instead of puts t id, we can do puts t dot id, puts t status, we can have puts t dot status, and so on and so forth. So we can use these to find our solution instead of using the hash keys. Here's what our answer might look like with those pieces of code. There's one Rails convention here that I want you to notice. Notice we have capital T in tweets in the code solution, and what's happening on the back end here is that it's going to lowercase that, pluralize it, and then it's looking for a table called tweets in our database. It's time to jump in to the CRUD. And by CRUD, I mean create, read, update, and delete. Now let's figure out how we can do each of these inside our Rails application. First, in the create, we do tweet.new. We can then set the status and call t.save to save the item. For reading, we then do tweet.find3, just like you saw a moment ago. For updating, we're going to find the tweet. Then we can set values on it and save it. And then for delete, we can find the tweet and call t.destroy to delete it out of the database. Now we're going to go through each of these in a little bit more detail, and I'm going to show you some alternate syntaxes. But first with create, notice that we're not setting the ID on the object here. That's because Rails is going to take care of that for us and properly increment the ID and store that in the database. Another way we can create a new tweet is simply by sending in a hash of the items that we want to set. We can then save that. We can also write this all in one line by calling tweet.create. So that's going to set these attributes and save the object. Next up, for reading, there's lots of ways we can read data out of the database. We can find a particular item with an ID number. We can find a bunch of items and it will return an array. We can find the first one. We can find the last one. We can find all of them. We can count them. And the interesting thing about count here is that it's actually doing this the correct way. It's not going to the database, pulling everything out, and then counting it. It's actually going to be doing a count query on the database and returning that number. We can also get all the zombies and order them by the zombie name. We can limit the number to 10. We can say, get us all the zombies where the zombie name equals Ash. 
or we can put all these different methods together to do something we like to call method chaining. Next up, we have update. So you remember with update, we find the tweet, we set something, and then we save it. Alternatively, we can set the attributes value and send in a hash and then save it. We can also call t.updateAttributes, which not only will set the items, but it will also save it. Next up is destroy, because zombies like destroying things, especially brains. Um, so as you saw before, we can find an item and destroy it. We can also write this on a single line. And lastly, if you want to destroy all the tweets, we can just call tweet.destroyAll. So we've already reached Zombie Lab 1. This is where you get to start coding and implement some of the stuff we've already learned. So go and have some fun with your new zombie friends.